Hello everybody, this is Mr. Rob and welcome back to another episode of the Washington Commanders franchise here on Madden NFL 24 as we reach the penultimate game of the season. Week 17 as the 3-12 Washington Commanders will battle the 9-6 Jacksonville Jaguars in Duval County, Florida as we get to see how our Commanders do as we run down the stretch. Obviously, has not been the best year for them, but hopefully they can pick up a win today. If you're excited for this one, make sure you drop a like and you subscribe down below, especially if you want more franchise content as we get ready for this matchup on the road. It's not going to be easy. The Jaguars currently lead the AFC South. So they've still got a lot of football to fight for. As we are underway here in Week 17, also a game to look out for on the bottom of your screen, the Cowboys-Giants are basically playing for the winner taking the division, so we'll have to see how that one plays out. As we'll start off with the football, and that'll bring up Michael Penix Jr., whose interception total is now up to 29. So the question is, will he hit the 30 mark? And at this rate, he probably will, as you can see the numbers, and what's coming into his final two games probably as a starter. First and 10, the goal RPO, Ricky Dockery gets the early reception. He picks up two. Second and eight now, handoff to Singletary. No, Pinks is going to pull it back on a read option, and he's going to pick up the first down with his legs. He even fooled me. It's a good move there by Penix. Now it's a 32. Now they hand it off to Singletary for the first time, and he had a big hole but just got tripped up by Josh Allen. Singletary 61 yards last week, got a little bottled up in the loss. Hopefully he can get free today. He's on second and four. He bounces this one outside. Gets a nice block from McLaurin downfield. Makes a beautiful move. Unfortunately, all this will not count. So it looks like it's going to come back on a holding call against center Ricky Stromberg. So instead of a first down, it'll be a second and 13 as Phoenix will now throw for it. As he is a man right in his face, gets hit as he throws as Philip Moorhead, the number 16 overall pick at UCLA with the pressure. Third and 13 now. Penix dumps it off for Calvin Easley, who makes the grab, breaks the tackle, and Easley picks up a first down. How about that? Calvin, easily make yourself known. He was a second-round pick out of TCU in this past year's draft. Hasn't got a ton of playing time. He's going to get a little bit more down the stretch, and if he makes plays like that, he'll definitely see his role increase. After a pickup of one of Singletary, second and nine, and here's Wilson off the mark for him as the pressure was applied from the outside. Now third and nine. Back to throw again. Phoenix will actually step up in the pocket, and he's actually going to throw it. However, this is a beautiful catch by Dockery. Unfortunately, it's not going to count as Phoenix will well pass the line of scrimmage, and that will end in a punt for Washington. Here comes the Jaguars, led by the superstar quarterback Trevor Lawrence, who's now at 38 touchdowns this year. That is tied for an NFL best this season. He's trying to make his case for MVP of the league. They'll start for their own 12-yard line. There's a handoff for Tank Bigsby, who's getting the start today, as the usual starter, Dalvin Cook, is hurt. Bigsby's coming off of a 16-rush, 66-yard game. It's now second and nine. Here's a quick pass outside. There's Calvin Ridley, who picks up four on the first pass attempt of the day. As Doug Peterson led offense, they're going to throw it a lot. It's here on third and five. It's a nice throw outside to Christian Kirk, who's having himself a really good season. Out to the 26 now, handoff Bigsley, counter right side, he sheds an arm tackle, and he's going to fight to the 9-yard line. Good year running back there, good run by the Auburn product. Second and one, now they go play fake, Lawrence scrambles outside the pocket, breaks an arm tackle, sweat, another one from Jacobs, and slides down. Lawrence very dangerous with his legs, you got to keep that in mind. First and 10 from the 40, they go play fake again, but this time Deron Payne is going to come up the middle, and Lawrence can't get away from that. Sacked down by Payne, who's having a really good season. He's always been good, but now he's starting to fill up the stat sheet. He's on second and 17, it's another sack. Chase Young comes around the edge, sacks him for eight, and now you got third and 25. Washington's bringing more pressure, and it gets home. That's Desmond Ricks from the nickel slot, and he gets the sack, and that ends the Jaguars' drive. They had a very bad punt as we got good field position. As here's first and 10 from the 31, and Phoenix Jr. now leading another drive down the field. He slides down after picking up eight, and then second and two goes RPO to Clancy on the outside. He makes the grab. However, he's hurt on the play, and he will not return to this game. So Calvin Easley will get a lot of snaps now at tight end, showing us what he's made of. Is on second and four, Singletary fights to the three-yard line. Goal to go now here for Washington. 
As we're going to go with bubble screen outside for Johnny Wilson, and he's going to find the end zone. Touchdown, Commanders. They get on the board for 7 nothing off of the grab from Johnny Wilson. So next drive here for the Jaguars, their own 25-yard line. Throw left side for Kirk, who makes the grab, and he gets away from the defense. Poor tackling by the Commanders, and Kirk is going to go 75. And unfortunately, Jeremiah Trotter's hurt on this play, and he's done for the day. So that'll bring us to the end of the first quarter. We're all knotted up at seven apiece as we get back to the action. Second and six here for the Commanders. This here's a gain of one. Christian Franklin now hurt on the play. A lot of players dropping so far in this game. Maybe it's the Florida Heat. As on third and five, here's a pass to McLaurin across the middle for a first down. Phoenix very smart here in the early going. Not taking any unnecessary risks. Is on first and ten. Handoff for Singletary, who bounces it left side, and he's going to pick up nine. Had a great first quarter of running, 80 yards in just the first frame. Second and one now, Phoenix outside the pocket, tries to dump it for Easley, but he overthrows him. However, there's a flag down. They're going to get unnecessary roughness on Davon Hamilton. So that's a free first down for the Commanders. They got basically first and goal. Handoff Singletary, left side, he's got some blocks, and he picks up four. Now out to the six-yard line. Gun goes the Commanders. Phoenix takes the snap, fires for Singletary out of the backfield, and he gets maybe one. Now you're facing third and goal from the five. Tight formation here, they'll throw out of it to Phoenix. Flush to his right, has a man open, but he sees him a little too late. He had Eric Ali, but leads him out of bounds, and Washington will just take the three. He'll get back on the board, and the lead is 10 to 7. As here's a first and 10 play, and Lawrence throws it deep, and he's got a man wide open. It's Christian Kirk again. He burns Desmond Ricks. Two home run shots for Kirk, and the Jaguars have their first lead of the ball game, 14 to 10. As again, the offense will take the field. As we've got a lot of practice in this game, there's a nice run by Singletary, and Davon Hamilton's hurt on the play. Now to the 40 of Jacksonville. Another good drive offensively here for Washington. This is a short play for Terry McLaurin. He picks up five. Second and five now. Handoff single Terry. Got plenty of space up the middle. And he's going to get out to the 25-yard line as the run game. He's already at 121 yards. First and 10. Now they go play fake. Trying to take their shot. Penix throws left side. He's got a man open. It's caught. It's a touchdown. That's Sean Long, the second-year sixth-round pick out of UTSA, who has his first career touchdown, and the Commanders are out 17-14, to thanks to two touchdowns already by Michael Penix. He's really showing what he should have shown all season. So now we lead 17-14, to but Jaguars again with the football, and they're driving as this one's ailed out of bounds, and that's the first incompletion of the day for Trevor Lawrence. Second and 10 now. Trying to set up a screen, but he's just going to throw this one in the dirt. Nothing really there. And now you got a big third and 10. Lawrence will go in the gun. Scrambles out right side. Going to try to pick it up himself, and he's going to get marked a yard shy. But the Jaguars offense is going to stay on the field. Doug Peterson wants to go for it. Fourth and one. Quick pass in the flat. A terrible route by Fuller. And this one's going to go free. And into the end zone for a touchdown. Brenton Strange with the six. Three touchdowns in the early going for the Jaguars. All off big plays. The defense not showing out today. As there's a great throw to Dockery on first and ten. And there's also a flag down, however. They're going to get pass interference on Tyson Campbell. So that play will stand. A good throw by Penix. As the offense has actually looked their best they've looked in quite some time. Unfortunately, the defense has looked the worst they've looked in quite some time. Campbell makes it up for the next place. He forces a pass breakup. Now second and ten. Bubble screen out for Long again. And he's going to pick up five. And now you got a third and five for the Commanders. They go empty here. Phoenix making some adjustments. Steps up in the pocket. Going to try to pick it up himself. And he's going to get it marked in just shy. Frazier will instead bring out the field goal team. It's a 58-yard try for Cameron Little, who struggled this season. However, this one is going to go right down the middle. Cameron Little, he's been perfect the past two weeks as he cuts it within one as we go to the two-minute warning. Jaggers are with the football, second and two of their own 44. Here's a pass to Evan Ringram, who gets away from Cody Kennedy. Trotter not returning to this game, so it's going to be up to him and Tranquil in the middle of the field. He's on first and ten now out to the 48. Jaguars still taking their time. They have all three timeouts, but on first and ten, Payne sacks down Lawrence. 
Loss of 11 makes it second and 22. Jaguars will burn some clock as here's a quick pass as somehow the receiver holds on through a big hit. First time out burn. Now third and 14. Lawrence out of the backfield. Dumps it off for Bigsley. And he's going to get close to the marker. Oh my goodness. I thought he got it. But he's marked into shy. However, Bigsley might have got it. A booth review is going to come out. And if you look at it, yeah, Bigsley had a first down. So a third and 14. The defense could not get off the field. Kendall Fuller really struggling in this game. First and 10 now. Left side. That passes air boil. And just like that, we're down to 22 seconds as things get chippy down on the field. Second and 10. Lawrence right side. That one's caught against Fuller again. Jaguars burn their second timeout. Now 15 seconds. Short pass for Ingram. This will burn the third. But with nine seconds of no timeouts, the Jaguars want to run another play. They're in the gun. Here comes pressure from Commanders. They'll throw it left side. This one's tackled in bounds, and they can't get back to the line. So the Jaguars will get nothing on this drive, and they'll lead by one going into the half. An interesting end to what's been a very exciting first half. We'll have to see who takes it in the second. So a lot of action here in this game between these two foes, but there's a lot of action going on around the league, including that NFC East game we talked about. Right now it's tied at 7 apiece, so I'll have to keep an eye on that one at the bottom. As, like I said earlier, the winner of this one probably will take the NFC East. All knotted up at 7 apiece. Second game we'll take a look at is in Buffalo. The Bills, remember they beat the Chiefs. They beat the Vikings in the past two weeks. The top two seeds in the NFL. And now they're leading the Raiders 21 to nothing. Could the Bills be making a late push? Finally in Miami, the team that does own that seventh spot is the Dolphins. And they trail the Browns 10 to seven. So a loss to the Miami could put the Bills in the postseason, which could be scary. But back to the second half, the exciting one here in Jacksonville as the Jaguars will start for the football and they'll start off with a quick pass for a gain of two as Lawrence has been sensational in the first half, specifically his connection with Christian Kirk. Second and eight, right side. There's an incredible catch by Evan Ingram. Defender all over him, but it didn't seem to matter. Now third and three in the full house, laying it off to Tank Bigsby with a great cut to the right side. And he'll pick up a gain of eight and the first down. Out to the 40 now. It's first and 10 pass. Quick hitter for Ridley, and he's going to pick up the first down. Commander's defender's just not reacting fast enough to these short passes, and Lawrence is killing him. Bootleg now first and 10 out in the flat, and that's a nice stop by Alex Anzalone. Brings down McLean for a loss of one. Second and 11. Here's that double A gap. Look, this time the Commanders will back off of it, but Lawrence with a great counter finds Ingram fast in the empty space. Gain of seven. Now third and four. As the Commanders crowd the line, as they'll quickly throw it this time, and it's incomplete. Knocked free by Fuller, who gets a nice one. And the Jaguars will try a 58-yard field goal, and it's not even close. Howie Johnson will push it. So the Commanders will start off their second-half drive, a nice field position at the 48, as that will be a gain of one for Singletary. He got 127 first-half rushing yards. Second nine, he's going to get the carry. He gets great blocking by Easley downfield. This brings him to the 36. Doesn't look like he's going to slow down. First and 10, quick pass. Here's McLaurin across the middle. That's a gain of seven. And I have to say, Phoenix has looked pretty good today. Second and three, it's a handoff for Singletary. And he'll run right into the arms of Devin Lloyd, the X-Factor linebacker, who was quiet in the first half. Now third and four, Phoenix to throw over the middle, and he gets intercepted right as they say that. Lloyd picks him off. That's just a great play on the football by Devin Lloyd. The Jaguars have probably the best linebacker tandem in the league, and that time was just a great play by Devin Lloyd. But nonetheless, that is number 30 for Phoenix, 30 interceptions on the season. First player since Jameis Winston to do that in 2019. Second and five now, Jaguars with the ball as that's a two-yard game. Bigsby may be a little too patient. It's now third and three, three tight ends to the left as the Commanders bring pressure, but Lawrence gets out of the pocket and he finds one of those tight ends for a first down. Out to the 39 now as it's a draw play for Bigsby who runs into Kennedy, shakes the tackles, and he picks up a loss of two. It was a tough loss of two, however. Empty now, second and 12. It's a quarterback draw, but Lawrence meets Allen. As quickly makes it now third and 18. And Lawrence is going to get sacked this time by Allen again. And that's going to quickly end this drive. They had some promise. So the defense gets off the field 
As the commander's offense now back with it. First and ten. Nice move there by Singletary to pick up five. Put it on Cole Bishop. Second and five now. Tight formation here. Clock winding down. Has to snap it. As Phoenix looks right side. Has Ali who just flat out drops it. Right in his hands. And he just lets it go through him. It's been a struggle down the stretch for Eric Ali. He is now third and five. Bubble screen for Wilson. Is sniffed out by the Jags. Great stop there. We'll go to the end of the third quarter after an explosive first half. There were no points scored in the third, so defense is showing up here. Jaguars start off with the football at their own 20-yard line. It's first and 10 across the middle deep, and that's caught. Great cab there by Calvin Ridley, and Lawrence is up to 345. 39, here's a handoff for Bigsley, who breaks the tackle of Allen and somehow picks up four. He's had over five yards per carry. Second and six, free man Sweat who gets there, but not before it's dumped off in time. Lawrence took a shot, but he seems okay. Third and three, can we get off the field this time? They'll throw for it. Lawrence, deep man down the field. It's Kirk and it's caught. Again, Kirk burns Fuller, and he gets him down to the 13. A great day from Christian Kirk. Hope you had him on your fantasy team. Is now first and 10. Here's a quick man in the flats for a pickup of four. Second and six now from the nine. Lawrence to throw again. This time dumps it to Bigsley out of the backfield. And he'll get marked inches shy down at the three. And now it's a tough one. Big play here. Lawrence drops back, throws quickly. It's incomplete out of the back of the end zone. Caught, but couldn't get the feet down. Jaguars will get three. It's now 24 to 20. As the next drive for the commander starts off with a nice double screen to Docker, who gets out of bounds. And Josh Allen's hurt for the Jags, and he will not return to this game. That could be a big blow for Jacksonville. Now third and eight. Phoenix across the middle gets this pass batted down by Marte Mapu, the other man of that great linebacker core. As they'll punt it back here to Jacksonville, who gets the ball nine and a half to go here in this ball game. As that one is a two-yard or a stop. Third and eight now. Lawrence outside the pocket, throws it deep across the middle, and guess who? Christian Kirk again gets behind the defense, picks up a big one. Next play, handoff, Bigsley. He gets stuffed up the middle, but still fights for a gain of two against Drew Tranquil. Next play, Lawrence back to the air. Four-man rush, pain in his face, but he finds Kirk, who beats Fuller again. Kendall Fuller really wants to forget about this one. Next play, short for Ingram, and he gets hit down by Martin after picking up three. 445 passing yards for Trevor Lawrence. Second and seven out, tight formation. He's going to throw for it again. Why not? Short, Ingram again. He gets hit but stays on his feet, and he picks up five. And now you got another third down. Third and two. The defense comes closer to the line of scrimmage. It's a quick pass, and of course it's caught in traffic. Christian Kirk, who is talking that trash to Fuller because he has cooked him today. First and 10 handoff for Bigsley. He gets stuffed close to the line of scrimmage. Now it's second and 10. Lawrence to the air. Fires, and he has Bigsley in the backfield who burns Ricks for a touchdown. That'll take us to the two-minute warning. The Jaguars lead 31-20. to As the commander's offense has a lot of work in front of them. They do have the ball at the 33 of Jacksonville as Phoenix looks left side, and that one's batted down by Denzel Burke. Second and 10. Phoenix again to throw for it. Scanning looks short, has easily, and he's going to pick up seven before going down. Third and three. Jaguars bring two in the gap. Phoenix sees it. He's actually going to change the play because of it, and he's going to throw it outside for Wilson, who has the first down. That's a great move there by Phoenix to see the pressure. Into audible out into a different play. First and 10 from the 15. Phoenix steps up in the pocket. Going to run forward. He slides down. Picks up seven. Clock continues to run. Commanders will not use their timeouts. They want to hold on to him because they need a second drive. And they're going to get a touchdown here. That second drive will begin shortly, hopefully. A Singletary finds the end zone. Washington will go for two. And they will not get it. Singletary is marked shy. So they trail by five. Washington will not kick an onside kick. They have three timeouts. They're going to try to get the stop. Here's the handoff to Bigsby on first down. He's going to get it and more. Tank Bigsby picks up a huge chunk, and that is not what you want to see. Leslie Frazier calls timeout, but I want to look at this play again. I know Jacobs was just called off the practice squad, but why are you running towards the guy in the flat? It's not a pass play. He really just ran into a block. Nonetheless, there's back to this 
running play as that is a loss of three. Second and 13, there's another loss that makes it third and 16. Washington used all their timeouts. So Jacksonville will just take a knee, it looks like, and let the clock run before kicking a field goal. Interesting call there as it's now going to set up a 52-yard try for Howie Johnson. The clock is run inside 10 seconds. And Sweat blocks it! Montez Sweat gets through the line! There's still four seconds to go. Washington has enough time for one more play. It's got to be a deep ball. Penix drops back. Lobs as deep as he can for McLaurin, but is batted down by Andre Sisco, and that'll do it. It's a exciting end to this ball game, but the Jaguars, they come out on top, 31-26. to A tough loss here for Washington because, honestly, this is probably the best game we've played in quite some time. Even though we lost this game and it does sting, it does feel nice knowing that we didn't look like complete fools out there. The offense actually looked pretty good. But, unfortunately, we just ran into the Jaguars' offense, which destroyed our defense. Who had the worst game they've had, I want to say, all season. If Lawrence wins MVP, people are going to look back at this game and realize, yep, that's the game that won it for him. Despite the fact Penix threw an interception, I thought he played pretty good overall. Obviously, not enough to save his job, but that's at least a highlight. We do have one injury, and it's Jeremiah Trotter Jr. He's done for the year. He tore his abdominal, so he'll go on IR, which is unfortunate because he's had a great season. That's just kind of been derailed by injuries. He's missed some games. So he'll go to the IR. We'll fill up the roster spot with Ben Crisp off the practice squad. Just an undrafted linebacker at Oregon State who's supposed to be black. But, you know, we got to love the draft glitch in here in Madden at the beginning of the year. And he will just give us some depth across the middle. Maybe he'll play because our linebackers are not very good at zone covers. Not that he is either. Your scores around the league in week 17. We'll start off on Thursday night. The Bears beat the Patriots. New England just they got to be the biggest disappointment of the season. They acquired Jalen Hurts, and they might give the first overall pick, at least a top three pick, to Philly because of how bad they've played. On Sunday, how about this one? The Packers lose to the Jets, but what makes this interesting, it was the NFL debut of Arch Manning. The number four overall pick got the start, and he looked pretty good, especially against the Jets team. That's one of the best in the AFC. New York gets the win, but good look there for Arch Manning. The Giants beat the Cowboys all but clinching the NFC East. And that's a big win for Big Blue. We face the Cowboys next week, and obviously they're not going to be too happy, which, of course, does not spell good for us. On Sunday night, the Vikings, they beat the Buccaneers. They basically clinched the one seed in the NFC. It's kind of been theirs all season long, and, well, just puts another loss in the book of Tampa Bay. The NFC champions last year might be losing to the NFC champions this year. And finally, on Monday Night Football, the Steelers beat the Falcons. Pittsburgh is a team you don't want to sleep on. Caleb Williams has been playing great second half of the season football. And if the Steelers continue to play hot, they can make a deep postseason run. They went to the AFC Championship game two years ago, and they're looking to finish it off this season. Your Players of the Week, Lawrence obviously gets it against us. Devontae Smith had 10 for 268 and two receiving touchdowns. That is a heck of a day for the former Heisman Trophy winner. Buckner had three sacks for the Colts. And then Chapman gets an interception for San Francisco. Got to love the young players showing out. But in our last game, we will play host to the Dallas Cowboys. Before we get there, here's a look at the playoff picture. Not much has changed. The Bills are not in yet, but don't sleep on them. They could squeak in if Miami fails, and that would just add even more to a stacked AFC. But yes, we play the Cowboys. It's our final game of the season. We finally reached the last one. We played the Cowboys back in Week 9. They killed us 42-20. to Hopefully we're not going with another performance for that. But obviously this is a mad Cowboys squad. Prescott threw five touchdowns in that one. Hopefully we can slow them down this time. But it's the final game of the season. We've reached the end of Year 4. It has been a bad one. But hey, sometimes that's just what happens. And at least it's coming to an end. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you drop a like and you subscribe down below, especially if you want more franchise content. I hope to see you guys in the off-season premiere for the Athletics tomorrow at 6 o'clock. You don't want to miss it. But this is Mr. Rob, and I'll see you in the next one.